Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John the Suspedia Trude, and welcome back to Stellaris Megacorp, where last time, I think we've actually now got ourselves, yeah, a very good understanding of what the shape of the galaxy is and how it's going to shape up, which is probably best demonstrated by going over to the diplomatic map mode. Yeah, basically, we've got a bunch of xenophobic dicks who hate me and like each other, involved in a defensive pact to the north of me, very much openly laying claims against me and generally wanting to cause some trouble. To the south and the west, however, things are looking a lot better. In particular, yeah, we've got a bunch of materialists floating around. So these guys down here, materialists, pacifists, fine, so we can get on just fine with them. Ganvius, of course, the plan, so we have a little rave set up on their world. They seem pretty cool with me too. Once again, xenophiles, materialists, me and them get on just fine. And finally, perhaps the biggest surprise of all, the tile. So yeah, the Twitter birds, they just sort of showed up and I looked at them and thought, okay, me and them might get on fine if not spectacularly, because, you know, we're both materialists, and yet it's really a bunch of materialists who are getting on well in this part of the galaxy, but you know, they're egalitarian and we're not, and they're militarist and we're not, and we don't actually share a border, we're not that close to each other, we're not gonna have too much to do with each other, but no, they wanted to be straight in a defensive pact, so uh, we've got ourselves a bit of a cold war up in the north here. Where, yeah, these two guys are now joined together in defensive pact. And me and the tiles are also in defensive pact. So neither of us can really do anything to the other, which is interesting. We'll have to figure out how to deal with that little stalemate as time goes by. To the south, however, we've got another, well, not really a problem, because I am, you know, a mega corporation. I'm not supposed to be playing wide, but though I've got myself a healthy amount of land and I've got to fill in the gaps as a priority today, I don't have a logical direction to expand into anymore because every single one of my hyperlane exits now goes into a different empire. So we're going to have to figure out what to do about that. I'm going to deploy my science ships like down here and around in this direction and maybe I'll kind of send someone else over in this direction just to see if there's any obvious empty space. There's nothing of course to stop me just you know surveying and colonizing anywhere I want. It's just going to be very expensive in terms of influence to do up front. So I should probably save up a bit of influence in case I want to, you know, start a little exclave over here north of the Zikmox or what have you. Still, let's get time ticking along here. Priority for the time being is, yeah, because I expanded so quickly to try and secure this area down here, there's a bunch of territories I haven't actually taken everything that I could have out of them. So, yeah, we've got this rather valuable territory over here, Hadricus. So one of my construction ships just has to go and clear up all of that. Yeah, we'll probably be in much better shape as soon as I've taken care of all of that business. Together with, yeah, locking down this area, locking down this area. I do, however, need one other priority, a migration Research pact. Complete. Because I need to actually have myself people who can deal with hot and cold planets. I can't really do that. I'm more about the temperate places. Which reminds me, however, that is... Hang on, what even is that? Is that... Is that Tundra? Do you like the cold? I'm not 100% clear. Do you like the cold? Hang on. No, that's Savannah. Oh, now that's interesting. You guys like the warm planets. Now that's very, very interesting indeed, because... Uh, yeah. Okay. This is... This is very interesting. Right, migration treaty. What's it going to take to persuade you that's a good idea? Because you, my little Twitter bird friends, could be very useful to me indeed. Also, survey speed up 25%. Marvellous, I needed that. And, ooh, curator exploration lab. Survey speed plus literary percent. Very useful, that's shown up this early on, but... No. That's the one I want right there. So, improved sensors for my ships, but more importantly, a listening outpost. Ship hyperlane detection rate plus four. Sensor range plus two. Get that in production, if flipping, immediately. Because once I've got that down, I'll be able to spy on the Euthonians and the Rontor a lot more effectively. Also, perhaps slightly worryingly, the curators flagged this system up here as uh, something of interest, without specifying what. But I can't help but notice, Ganvius have not gone and colonised that sector. So, uh, I'm guessing by of interest, you mean, oh god, it's eating all of our ships right now. Let's not worry about that just for the time being. And the L clusters, yeah, I've actually already picked up two insights about that, which is good. But I'm also slightly worried that the TARS, being in possession of two L gates, might be the ones to open them up. Right, also, 
Does anyone remember what the Monica Deer are? Right, you know what? Six months, get on it, whatever it is. I want to know what they are. We want to have a quick chat with them. It'll be fine. Also, here's something that surprised me for how late it's shown up. Apparently, we have picked up the birth of interstellar piracy. Marvelous. So, interstellar trade between our systems continues to grow. Ah, that's what it is. This used to just be triggered by the fact, you know, you'd spent a bit of time playing the game and it was just introducing combat. But of course, these days, space piracy isn't just about keeping your fleet up to snuff. Space piracy is about specifically causing problems for your trade. Right, so we've got ourselves heretics. Blimey, okay. Is that how our society works? We're so into, like, trade and making money. People who are not into making money or stealing money. We don't just call them criminals, we call them heretics. Blimey. So, yeah, they've converted starships into weapons of war. We need to shoot those bastards down and are attacking our trade routes in the Varna. What's a Varna? Right, apparently that's a Varna. Gotcha. So, we need to shoot those bastards down. And hello, what are Space you guys doing over attack. here? So, okay, you're just going to go and cause some trouble, are you? This is just a handful of... Yeah, just a handful of basic corvettes, to be honest. They've only got a strength of 400. I've got... Well, I've got a bit more strength than that in the form of 800. Yeah, begin hunting them down. And, yeah, let's get an admiral on the actual fleet just so we know what's going on. Not fleet logistics, to be honest. That's kind of... Okay, you're all terrible. Fine, I'll take adaptable just so you level up a bit faster in that case. Right, get out there, teach them a lesson, all right? We cannot have the trade being damaged because that is probably going to have an immediate effect on my... Yeah, there we go. So right now, any trade that's actually being sent via the Varna system, none of it's getting through. And that's actually immediately caused a massive problem for my economy because I'm dependent on trade to keep the energy flowing in. So all of a sudden, having hostile ships inside your empire, pirates or not, can be economically devastating. Because if the empire relies on trade, yeah, it's getting worse. The situation is getting worse, probably because my fleet has officially left dry dock at this point. So, uh, right, probably need to go and take care of those bastards sooner rather than later. And this is good news, the Ganvius and the Zikmok just entered a commercial pact, which should boost the trade of both of them, meaning, I'm assuming, the trade of this main capital world down here of the Zikmok's gonna go up. Now, let's talk about the Zikmok, because we like them, but we are also criminal, space, gangster, pirates, all of that business. The people who it's very important we don't annoy is, yeah, the tiles, and they don't generate much trade right now at all. But these guys down here, they generate a fair amount of trade, and that's about to go up. And potentially they're going to trade even more, because they've got these traders over here, who are logically going to, at some point, do some form of trade deal with those guys. So, yeah, we might want to consider, when we've got the money for it, actually laying down an actual branch office on Makar. But, first... We've got to save up the money, and two, we've got to make sure it's not full of police stations so it won't immediately be shut down so it's not a waste of money. So, I'm deploying a science ship down over there. Oh, my outpost got taken out. That's fine, it's just damaged, it's not actually destroyed forever. Oh yes, and apparently the creatures we were just observing were just the Tianki. Oh yes, of course, because though we haven't run into any Tianki, we ran into the Matriarch, so that triggered that event right there. So, hunting them will be a net loss anyway. Frequency tuning, marvellous, probably anyway. And where are the pirates right now? They're just chilling out over here, are they? Are you actually... Will you stop bombing my systems, please? Oh, bloody hell. They're causing a lot of trouble right now. Oh, and they've set up their own little outpost. Lardy flipping dar. Though, on the plus side, my forces should be... Yeah, my forces are moving in. We are by far the stronger. We'll be taking those guys out momentarily. Though they have knocked out my research facility, which is very annoying. Oh, and better and better, my corvette hulls just got stronger, just in time for the battle, which is marvellous. And if we do have war on our minds, a destroyer. Yep, get the destroyers in production, please. Just a handful of them, if we've got them and our neighbours don't, could prove very important in the event we do actually end up in a war with Euthonians. Oh, we got a battle on our hands here. Yep, yeah, my fleet is already up to 900 strength. There are those blue lasers. Absolutely marvellous. Once we get through the shields, the lasers will just tear the actual hull points apart. They are struggling to get through my shields. I've got plenty of shielding. Oh, yeah. They are being torn to shreds. Uh, only one of my ships in any danger. Job done. Nice and easy, because, of course, we can jump out. They can't. Go and attack their pirate base if you be so kind. Uh, kick them out of this system once and for all. Marvellous. 
So this little pirate nest should just go down no time at all. Ooh, this is a very nice system, by the way. I like this system. That's a very pretty star. And oh yeah, the lasers are just tearing the station to shreds. We should get ourselves some free, yep, energy and minerals from that. And this little station is also... Are you technically back on our side? I think you might be back on our side. I think that's just fallen back into our hands automatically. Good, 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 good. Right, everything seems to be under control there. And that should mean the energy is restored. Good, the energy has now been restored. Ah, but we've still got a bit of a deficit going on. I'm guessing... No, no, that sorted itself out when the month updated. All right, trade has been restored. Money's been restored. But I think you can now see, yeah, disruption to trade can be... Very problematic. You've got to be careful with that. In fact, I could probably do with some more energy coming in. Let's just quickly check the actual, yeah, the expansion planner. Because we did have one, yeah, we had one flipping amazing world for actually getting energy in. And it's this one, Tatanga. Tatanga is basically going to be a huge energy center if we could get it settled. Which is going to be a problem. Okay, here's the thing. If I do choose to try and settle Tatanga, then it's going to be hugely expensive. Yeah, basically every pop on that planet is going to cost double what it should do in terms of food and in terms of consumer goods. But I do have plenty of food and consumer goods. And I don't anticipate there's going to be a huge number of owls on Tatanga. Just because the low habitability is going to slow down the growth rate, there's going to be a strong migration push away from the planet. There's probably not going to be many owls there, just a handful running some generator districts. But it's laying the infrastructure ready to be a very appealing world for all of our nearby friends who are more desert inclined to migrate to, which could be very, very useful indeed. Remind me, uh, you guys are, yeah, your savannah over there. These guys down here are, they're cold. And then the Ganvius, yeah, you're actually jungle as well. But I think you guys are, yeah, you're actually arid as well. So as a result of that, we just need a migration treaty with the ducks or the tiles. Now, the tiles like us. The tiles have got to like us sooner or later. Oh, that's very close already. That opinion is worth a lot of bonus. Trust is going up. Mutual rivals is going up. I might just do these guys a favourable trade deal. Because in all fairness, I need a bit more energy anyway. So I might just give them a favourable trade deal. Trading away a little bit of minerals for... A little bit of energy, but I'm going to make it sweet from their point of view. All right, so I am going to trade away now. I'm going to trade away my minerals, actually, and I'm going to trade those for your energy credits, which should be floating. Oh, wow. Seriously, you don't want to trade any energy. They must be in the middle of an energy crisis, too. Ah, but they know about someone else out there. All right. How about if I pay over the odds for comms? I wanted to pay some minerals up front for some comms. Yeah, go on. I will pay you 200 minerals for communications. So, a very favourable deal from your point of view. Which should therefore just knock the opinion up a little bit. And the Confederated Immisera States. Alright, who are these? Oh, it's snails! Oh, these guys are adorable. Marvellous. So, you guys are xenophobic, military spiritualist. Fine. We're not going to be friends. Got it. Oh, but someone else is apparently wanting to get in touch. The Havel Golden Foundation. So, who are they? That's... Oh, it's a mega church. Fine. So, it's another mega corporation, except this time, yeah, they're more about converting everyone to spiritualism. And would you believe they're nice and xenophiles? They want to, yeah, lure everyone in to their church, which is not going to work because, I'm sorry, but I find your neck really creepy. That's so weird. Okay, so those snails to the north, and actually, though they don't like me, they also don't like the Rontor. Fine. Which, as far as I'm concerned, makes them useful. And then we've got a mega church over here. Lovely. Actually, you know what? Time to double check this. So, this trade league right here. Empire modifier. Yes! Brand loyalty and trading posts! Those guys are definitely a mega corporation. They're just a friendly mega corporation. Right. Got it. So, yeah, the game has definitely spawned a fair few megacorps into the universe right now. But actually, like, here, 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 here. They're all over the flipping shop, okay. Which isn't actually that great for me, because every other empire that's a megacorp 
I can't actually put my branch officers on their worlds. Megacorps are not allowed to actually seed each other with branch officers. So, yeah, if we could actually have fewer Megacorps and more traditional empires, that'd be spot on. That gets them up to plus 94, including, yeah, favourable trade deal, which is only a tiny, tiny amount there. They don't like the fact that we are a criminal syndicate. Okay, we're very close. We just need to wait for trust to go up a little bit, because trust should go up to, what is it, 50? Yeah, that should be absolutely fine. Just wait for trust to rise. We will be able to have a migration treaty with those guys down the line. You know, I think we're dangerously close to losing our franchise on Ganvius Prime. They've recruited even more enforcers to try and counteract the effect of crime on the planet. So crime is currently down at, yeah, 0%, and most definitely significantly into the negative. So they have managed to basically eliminate huge amounts of crime, and I'm very worried that basically any moment they could just kick us off the planet. Oh, exactly what I flipping wanted. The tiles want a migration treaty. Spot the flip on. Yes, 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 yes. In fact, there's a new twist in 2.2 and Megacorp, which is the moment you have a migration treaty, you are allowed to immediately... Hang on, let's just head over to Osprey Station here. If I want to set up a colony ship right now, I can straight away say it's going to belong to the tiles. Even if not a single tile has moved into my empire, like, somehow we're allowed to just have a colony ship of them anyway, because I assume we could just find enough of them interested in moving to staff a colony ship. Now, let's get a bit more information about these guys. So, they are repugnant. So, if we actually put them on jobs that are supposed to make amenities, they're 20% worse at that. Uh, communal, pop housing usage. Ah, minus 10% on the housing usage. Quite useful indeed. Uh, quick learners, so leader experience gain is up. Rapid breeders, very, very useful indeed. And uh, Savannah preference, great. So I think we should basically just start getting on that immediately. Tatanga 4 is a desert world, so not quite perfect. It'll be 60% habitability rather than 80% if that were Savannah. But it's not terrible. We should probably get going on that. It's a big world. It is rich in energy, hugely rich in energy. And all of the energy is not actually covered up by any tile blockers. So uh, we can get straight down there and get on it. Yeah, screw it. Let's get on it right now. We are over our administrative cap, but it's only about... Oh, blimey. Right, leader cost is now up to 20%. Leader upkeep plus 20%. Tradition adoption cost up 10%. Technology is getting more expensive fast. I need to prioritise some text to actually boost the admin cap sooner rather than later. The alternative, of course, is, if we actually just consider Cornwall itself, is a sector. So right now, I'm basically just controlling it directly. But remember, it does actually really live in its own little sector over here and have all of this area that technically kind of falls under its jurisdiction. Now, if I were to choose to, I could actually basically take these guys and actually create a vassal. Which I assume would mean that they would basically become an independent empire and thus move out of my admin cap, but just be working for me as a subsidiary. Which is something to consider. Might be something interesting as time goes by. We'll leave it for now. I'm willing to just accept some of those penalties for going over the admin cap for the minute. Meanwhile, yeah, I've already actually got these ships coming around here to lock down this area. So uh, we're okay for now. We're okay for now. In fact, you know what? These things are quite expensive, aren't they? Just in case the tiles change their mind for some reason, I should probably get that into production immediately. So get a colony ship of tiles underway because that takes some time to do. Aha, and we've got our first robot, Marvelous. So yeah, basic robots can basically only really be things like farmers and miners. They're not really good at anything technical. They can't promote up to specialists, I don't believe. But they have lots of very good advantages, which is, uh, yeah, they're just as good at farming as any human is. I know they kind of used to be better before 2.2. Now they seem to be about the same. So, yeah, this guy produces uh, 7.9 food. Uh, so does the robot. So they're exactly the same. But the robot requires less in the way of housing and less in the way of amenities, which I suppose is supposed to represent, like, they need to be stored somewhere and they require, like, upkeep and maintenance. And that's just being, like, represented by a rise in amenities. I'm not sure. Given the game's very clearly pointing out these guys exist in a state of non-sapient servitude, I'm not sure why they need amenities at all, but screw it. They still need some amenities, just a lot less. Maybe it's the people that, like, work maintaining the robots that need the amenities or something. I don't know. 
Anyway, robots can do basic lower class jobs as well as pops can, but are cheaper to maintain. So they're very, very good indeed and will automatically displace a worker. So a worker down here has instead been shoved down to unemployed, which now gives me a bit of an interesting choice about what to do with him. So for 100 NG, I could ship him over to Cornwall and that would help speed them up towards population 10, assuming they're not actually already there. No, no, they're at nine and rising quickly right now. So they're fine. We don't need to rush any of that business. They also, of course, have the advantage of not actually having a happiness rating. So on worlds where happiness would naturally be low, due to like a unique modifier to that planet where happiness is just lower, these guys might be a good candidate. And of course, we can ship them off to unfavorable worlds because robots don't have a climate preference. They can basically just work wherever. So we could, in theory, I assume, just mass produce robots on Asprania and then just keep actually sending them over to the relatively inhospitable Tatanga. Yep, there we are. The robot can 100% be shipped over. That costs 100 energy just for the process of shipping it, I suppose. So, yeah, mass producing robots on one world and then shipping them to inhospitable other worlds, totally a valid tactic and totally something I should consider for Tatanga. And the science of us I've just been sending about trying to finally clear out all of those anomalies I've been finding that are quite tough, so these are quite slow to do. He's discovered a disturbing tangle of technology in a deep crater on an asteroid surface. So evidently someone has, with rather simple means, managed to stabilise a one-way wormhole. And the science officer quickly asserts that the asteroid is the exit point. The other end opens up somewhere in uncharted space some light years away from a black hole. And small quantities of dark matter are leaking, being siphoned through the wormhole. And they seem to have abandoned the operation. But that adds dark matter. Nice. In fact, actually, that's the second dark matter we've got inside our empire. So once we have the ability to actually harvest that, that can be very, very valuable indeed once the galactic market gets set up and we can start selling things on there. Particularly as, yeah, it feels like next to all the other empires I've run into who are actually, you know, trader empires, we are doing well on the trade front. Meaning I'm hoping we get to be the ones who actually ultimately set up the galactic market because then it will be cheaper for us to trade in. And exactly what I was hoping was going to happen has happened. I deployed my science ship into the actual system Makar is in because the borders are open. And as a result of that, I have full visibility of their planets, which unfortunately are blimey. Okay, the AI may be slightly overbuilding precinct houses, to be honest. But then, okay, what do they actually do? They produce unity, they decrease crime, and they... Ah, they're spawning defensive armies. So the reason why the AI is... Okay, that might be a bit overkill, to be honest. The reason the AI is actually spawning precinct houses isn't just to deal with crime. They also want a bit of security in case they come under attack. Got it. Though it looks to me like, yeah, they might want to be a little bit of tweaking going on there. It feels like the AI is, yeah, somewhat overproducing on that front. So I'm glad we went and checked this because, yeah, it would be madness to try and actually land a criminal branch office on this world. It would just be immediately shut down. Massive waste of money. So in which case, ah, Cornwall is up to population nine, still somewhere off its tenth. So I'm going to say, let's just resettle that one unemployed pop over to Cornwall. So he goes over there, he probably becomes unemployed there, actually. No, he doesn't. There's plenty of spare farmer positions, so that is more productive for the entire empire. And, as an added bonus, yeah, we're up to 10 pop, meaning I can spend 400 minerals upgrading, yeah, the reassembled ship shelter into an actual proper planetary administration. Spot on. Now, what else do we need here? What else do we flipping need? What is the logical thing to build? We've got some minerals, but not exactly a ridiculous number, to be perfectly honest. You know, I'm tempted by a second robot assembly plan. Let's just get more and more robots out here. But, worth keeping in mind, yeah, the upkeep of a robot assembly plant is five energy. So, those things are expensive. Very, very expensive indeed. Then again, an alloy foundry is actually four, so it's not exactly ridiculous. Corporate culture is relatively cheap, but managers are not necessarily the most useful people to have inside your empire. Might be fun to have some doctors. I mean, the gene clinics are converting, yeah, consumer goods into amenities and pop growth speed. 
Yeah, further increasing pop growth speed on a new world might not be the worst thing in the world at all. Yeah, go on. That sounds fun. A gene clinic nice and early on just to help reinforce the growth rate of this place. Speaking of which, it rather appears to me that, yeah, planetary growth has actually worn off here. So let's actually just make that happen again. Wait, did that actually worn off? I don't know if that had worn off. I should have checked up here. Well, screw it. We've done it again regardless. We have plenty of food. It doesn't matter. Oh, but wonderful news. We have received a message from a very familiar name. The Infinite Pond has decided to get in touch with us. Hello there, Infinite Pond. Yep, Science Directorate, Federation Builders, you marvellous bastards. My first proper playthrough of Stellaris, that was these guys. Yep, they are indeed very materialist, slightly pacifist. They didn't really end up being that pacifist, but whatever. Yep, we have much to gain from this encounter. Where are the Infinite Pond? Oh, they're... They're way up there. Okay. I'm not quite sure why they decided to make touch with me right now. And they're not exactly doing spectacularly by the looks of it. How crowded are you right now? You've got a bunch of people around you. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. They seem to like me well enough for the time being. But honestly, we're not going to have too much to do with them. They are very, very far up there. I'm guessing they've just got like a science ship bumbling around this part of the world. Or maybe they traded comms with one of these guys. Actually, the most logical thing would be they traded comms with the actual delicious elves right here. Because me and the delicious elves are in contact. So that's probably how that happened. All right, and the egg carrier is indeed ready. I was about to say that's an odd name, but no, it's not, because the tile are also birds. This is actually a bird alliance we've got going on here, which is very, very cool indeed. So you guys just head in that direction. You head over there and, yeah, lock down that final area. And finally, we'll have, well, the borders will still be a little bit on the messy side because something here is stopping, yeah, any of this territory being taken. Something's blocking this up. We've been told that by the Enclaves. And, uh, yeah, we've also got ourselves a little territory that needs to be taken there. A little bit of territory that needs to be taken there. I'm guessing something is stopping the tiles taking this territory. Maybe some crystalline entities or something. But other than that, yeah, the Empire will finally be looking a bit more on the complete side. Which is very, very welcome indeed. Okay, housing is under control. But we could do with a few more jobs in Asprania. Go on then, have another city district. They're a bit on the expensive side, but that gets me an extra clerk job, which is trade value. And trade value for me is very, very valuable indeed. So let's just get another city down on the capital over there. Cornwall is already building, yeah, planter administration, which should actually create a bunch of new jobs, I think. Because I think the planter administration is, yeah, that only produces two colonist jobs. The planter administration, meanwhile, creates, yeah, executive jobs, and enforcer jobs, and I think two... No, the ruler jobs are the executive jobs. Fine. So there's going to be an extra specialist job. So there's about to be an extra job floating around there, regardless, and... Oh! Did we just run into another nightmare, by the way? Right. Okay. Near the Eye of Hawking. Is that the Eye of Hawking, by any chance? Alright, so, basically, we've learnt why the Zikmox aren't expanding. <laughs> I'm guessing, by the way, yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. That's the second ship we've managed to lose in a row in this bit of the world. <laughs> Got it. Dimensional horror over there. Nice to know where the dimensional horror is. That thing could be quite useful. So that's, that's exploded. Right, shall we just get another science ship? But like, this time send it like this way. This way would be good. Ah, the Confederated Immisera states, the snails up north, has declared the Tile States their rival, which is odd. But then again, I think possibly they just hate everybody, so uh, maybe that's not too surprising at all. Alright, we need to get ourselves, yeah, more fleet, and uh, we desperately need some additional admin capacity, because I need to keep expanding. I need to keep expanding just to actually take that energy-rich world, just because energy's looking... Uh, a bit dicey, and I don't like being so 100% dependent on my trade that if a single thing cuts off my trade, I'm into a deficit. That's no good at all. Alright, recruit even more scientists. Don't tell them what happened to the last scientists. Now, this time, please don't run into something that immediately murders you. And the Tiles have decided to retaliate against the Emissera by declaring them rivals as well. Now, if I declare you a rival, am I allowed to do that? That gives us... Yeah, makes other rivals friendly towards us. Don't do that just yet. These guys are... Then again, 
Hang on, am I allowed to stack that? Because right now you guys love me. You guys absolutely love me. But if I was willing to declare a rivalry against these bastards too, does that stack? And in which case, would you guys maybe be totally fine with me running some form of crime syndicate on your world? It's probably not worth the risk. These guys are an important tactical ally for me, all right? Us two together, the great materialist bird alliance, we need to stand against the xenophobic dicks to the north. And there it is, Tatanga 4. A dry climate, a massive world, a ridiculous capability to generate energy. Absolutely flipping love it. And picking up on the naming protocol that I was originally going to go for with Abundance before we renamed it Cornwall, yeah, this world is going to generate a huge amount of energy credits. It is going to make us rich. So, I think this world should be called Prosperity. There we flipping go. Oh, and it's 2040. Time for a new election, which I can actually get involved in if I were to choose to. So... What have we got right now? We've got ourselves Wings of Scion, our existing ruler, 74 years of age at this point, Fertility Preacher, Space Miner, yeah. Mining station output plus 10%. Not as good as it used to be, to be honest, and we're not building as many mining stations as we used to, so uh, not spectacular. Pop growth speed up 5% is very, very nice indeed. Who are the alternatives? Who are the alternatives we've got here? Eyes of Red over in Physics Research. His agenda is... Uh, a new generation. So pop growth speed up, happiness up. It's not bad at all. Xeno outreach, xenophile ethics attraction plus 10%. Again, that's probably the worst of them so far. Unity from jobs. What jobs? Oh, as in jobs that produce unity, produce 10% more of it. I'll probably abstain, to be honest, we'll just see who we end up with at that point, which is the new Pirate King will indeed be Eyes of Red. We've got a changeover. So he was actually, you know what? I probably would have picked him anyway. So previously a scientist on Asprania has become the new ruler. Marvellous. So pop growth speed up, happiness up 5%. Very happy with that. Meaning we now actually need a new scientist for physics research. And, oh, here we go. We've actually got someone who's good at field manipulation regardless. Now, rather concerningly, a series of rapid seismic changes that are transforming a formerly pristine environment into an unrecognisable hellscape have apparently hit Prosperity 3. Which has destroyed all buildings and left rifts, but that's not... Yeah, we're Prosperity 4, or rather Tatanga 4. Prosperity 3 is currently... Oh, wow, okay. Well, I'm glad we didn't settle on this world then, because this world's apparently gone a bit wrong. Gotcha. So, uh, seismological phenomena. Habitability down, happiness down, pop growth speed down. But there is more society research from, you know, surveying how the hell it went quite this badly wrong. Gotcha. Maybe stay off this world for the time being. It's kind of exploding. Now, if this part of the galaxy is basically hell and has gone horribly, horribly wrong... What's going on on this side of the galaxy? Because the Ganvias seem to have slowed right down and uh, aren't particularly interested in expanding. So, go on then. I'll just basically send a ship in this direction. Just to, you know, have a little bit of an explore Research about. Complete. See what's going on precisely. And we've also got... There we go. The listening outpost is ready to go. Spot on together with uh, the upgraded sensors. Oh, I'm very happy about that and... Uh, Hello! It's the Fallen Materialist Empire. I like you guys. The sheer inefficiency of your technology pains us. As you are a valuable client... Oh, good. They're willing to actually pay me for the science that I handed over to them. Marvellous. We've decided to share with you some of our understanding of the universe. This is not something we do for just any species, so be sure to continue to be of use to us. Ingratitude is not a desirable trait in children. So, they are going to give us a precursor data cache. So, wow. 25% up in physics society and engineering research for the next 10 years. We very graciously accept, my lord and master. And, uh, oh, what's going on on Prosperity 3 right now? Okay, 
Now there's toxic gas and sludge, because obviously there is. So the changes to Prosperity 3 are both irreversible and substantial enough to render the planet uninhabitable within a near future. Meanwhile, the rhythmic pulses from the planet's core are, everyone agrees, pretty damn cool to dance to, so we've immediately started just playing footage of the disaster in the plant dance clubs across Ganvius Prime. Well, that's good at least. Oh, that world is, yep, yeah, kind of exploding right now. Up to 60% devastation, 0% habitability. <laughs> Nobody wants to live there right now, it's very much on fire. Now, before I was distracted by that, yes, here we go. Starbase FTL inhibition and planetary FTL inhibition. An absolutely crucial one. The moment that is down, yeah, that changes the way warfare potentially shakes out. So, very, very useful indeed. Let's just crack on with that. Oh, bloody hell! Um, Prosperity 3's cracked open. And it turns out it, it wasn't a planet. So... It was an egg. Prosperity 3 was an egg all along. So, right. Okay. And now a void spawn has been hatched. And it is indeed an abomination. Should we be concerned by the void spawn? Like, I feel like we should be concerned by the void spawn. Like, it would be nice to study the giant egg. But is that thing going to cause trouble for, like, you know, prosperity? Should we be concerned? I feel like we should be concerned by this. A void spawn just strikes me as... Yeah, that's... It doesn't look friendly. It really doesn't look that friendly at all. But it's not actually attacking my constructor ship yet. So that's nice. In fact, the game isn't formally acknowledging it as an enemy. Maybe it's... Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's not about to eat me. Well, while we're waiting to figure out whether it is playing to eat me, the Citizen League of the Elegan have decided to make contact and- Ooh, they are ugly. They are very ugly. But we should be friendly because they're xenophiles and they're materialists and they're good at fighting. So, we should definitely try and be friendly with those guys. Where are you located, my good man? Ah, you're up there. I'm guessing someone else just- Okay, so, yeah. I'm guessing that, yeah, the Void Spawn, the Void Spawn has decided to start attacking. Do we know how strong the Void Spawn is? Because I'm not quite sure we know what to do about the Void Spawn. Yep, we're just going to start bombing it at this point. Let's just quickly check. Oh, bloody hell, it's, yep, it's destroyed everything. Right, we have no clue how strong this thing is, precisely. It's just, please tell me, is it about to start bombing Prosperity? Please don't bomb Prosperity, alright? I spent a lot of time setting that place up. It was supposed to be a- No! No! Shoo! Go away! Leave us alone! Oh, this is not good. It's about to eat Prosperity, isn't it? It's totally- Yeah, it's heading straight at- Maybe it's- No, is it going to the moon? If we'd like to go for the moon, perhaps. Yeah, that's right! Nothing to eat here! Nothing to... Yeah, there we go. Right. Now, I feel like in some ways this is going to interrupt, like, you know, trade with prosperity. So, you guys are kind of on your own for a bit. Not exactly sure how we're planning to deal with the void spawn. Also, weirdly, the citizens of Elagarn have decided to actually lock me out of their empire. Which is very odd, because we're at plus 18, and yeah, me and them pretty much agree on everything. So, I'm really not quite sure what they've got against me, but all right. Maybe it's just things with tentacles on their faces, because, like, the Euthonians have tentacles on their faces, and they hate me too. Okay, so what it seems to be doing is just traveling around from planet to planet. It was entering the orbit of Prosperity 2, then it went over to Prosperity 5, so it's just doing circuits for the time being. Problem is, I've no idea how strong it is. By any chance, could my friends over in the Curator Enclave tell me something about that? Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, not the L gates. What I need to know is... Yeah, I need to know about the, the Void Spawn. Tell me about the Void Spawn, because it's kind of shown up and is, like, eating everything. 
So, uh, the void spawn is far away from home. We believe it is the progeny of an extra galactic predator of unthinkable proportions that stalks the void of space in search of its prey. Though we've never encountered a live specimen, we have heard tales of the destruction and chaos grown void spawn leave in their wake. It is said that worlds fester under their shadow. Right, that's probably bad because I've got a world literally under its shadow right now. So, okay, what can we do here? What is it really? Is that what you've just told me? Yeah, the mother lays planet-sized eggs in orbit of a star, which then incubate for thousands of years, sometimes long enough to develop an atmosphere and organic life. I am so glad I didn't settle that world. That would have been very annoying if the extremely prosperous world turned out to just be a massive egg. They feed off living matter, and adult void spawn are said to exert a strange influence on all living things. Fortunately, this spawn seems to have been abandoned by its parents, Perhaps it would be best to stifle the creature while it's still young and vulnerable. Right, well, how would we actually do against it? Poorly, very poorly. Okay, so I can't just go to war against it. How much money do you want to actually give me a bit of an edge against it? Right, damage to void spawn plus 25% if I give you a thousand energy. Right, well, I don't have that much energy right now, so... We're going to have to leave that be for the time being. Dear oh flipping dear. Right, though, I think we've got some good news here. Yep, traditions. Uh, ship upkeep reduced by 10%, naval capacity up by 20%. That will do. I could do with a bit more energy, so that should help with a very small energy surplus right now and leave me only one tradition away from having my second ascendancy perk. Good. And unfortunately, yeah, we've no idea how strong it is, we've no idea how to defeat it, Research but we do know it doesn't have shields, it does have armour. So, armour piercing will be very, very useful indeed. Naval capacity just went up massively. Good, 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 good. Now we've got, ooh, hello, a planetary capital. So that is, how big does it need to be to actually upgrade that? It does not say... So I'm guessing that's going to be, yeah, the planetary administration gets upgraded to a capital, but maybe 50 jobs? Who knows? Bonus housing, bonus amenities, an extra executive job, an extra enforcer job. Okay, not the worst thing in the world. And a hall of judgment requires, ah, another one of those buildings that needs the exotic gas to operate, which I cannot harvest yet, but I do have a source of it ready for when I do. So... Don't need that just yet. Oh yes, and if that's actually an upgrade for Enforcer Jobs Plus 5, that will actually be an upgrade for the Precinct House. So, that is not a priority for me right now. I don't really need to terraform either. Energy Siphon is not spectacular, really. I'm not really facing things that have got huge amounts of shields. If that were hugely powerful against armor, that might be nice, but... Soil Remediation. I'm guessing that means somewhere has actually got some soil remediation, but I think that's on prosperity, and uh, prosperity, what we want is the energy, and the energy is not blocked off, so that's not a priority. Alright, you know what, we'll do this one anyway, just because we will want the planetary capital sooner or later, because executive jobs are pretty good, and it won't even take that long to do, so let's crack on with that. Now, we finished the sensor upgrade, meaning immediately all of my buildings and civilian ships get auto-upgraded without me having to do anything. So, yeah, I can now see into neighbouring empires. So I can see what this place actually is and what it looks like. So, uh, this is a star base upgraded to uh, level 2 and it's definitely got itself a whole bunch of guns. Uh, yeah, 1,000 combat strength, 12,000 hull points total. Not insignificant. Not insignificant will be very difficult for my fleet to break, especially if a single ship shows up to help support the damn thing. So pushing into here is going to be very, very tricky indeed. If I were to build, yeah, one of those uh, little kind of listening outposts here, that would boost that by a further two, which would get, sadly, yeah, my visibility up to Raxum, but not actually to their capital. So I would not be able to spy on their capital at all. However... I could spy on the Rontus capital from the Rontus blockade, which I would say is probably worth doing. So let's actually just get, yeah, a listening outpost down over there immediately. Just because the ability to spy on the Rontus and the systems that are the only way they've got of getting into my empire, that strikes me as useful. Speaking of which, the Rontus outpost is, yeah, it's also about a thousand and... Uh, 
defense platforms are really damn expensive at 200 to go. Not as bad as it once looked. I do have, yeah, a fair few allies I'm floating at the minute. Here's the thing. If I were to attack the Uthom, I would need two things. One, I'd need to be extremely confident I could actually take out that star base of theirs. Now I have visibility of it, I can actually see what's going on a bit better, which is it's mainly going to be lasers. Now, my fleet has a fair amount of shields on it, so wouldn't be so bad. And yeah, it's got a blend of shielding and armor, but a lot more armor than it has shields. So we could set up our fleet in order to take that thing out. The problem is their fleet will show up sooner or later. And I believe their fleet is roughly equivalent to ours right now. So yeah, it's going to be approaching about a thousand two. Though I've just actually gone up, yeah, three times greater in my fleet capacity. So uh, I could have a significantly larger fleet start to be built up. Assuming I can afford to maintain it. The problem is, well... I've got plenty of alloys. That's not a problem. The problem is uh, the energy cost. Okay, let's just focus on prosperity, which I believe is not going to be done until like 2244. Yeah, I think colonization is a bit slower than it used to be because I've literally finished the expansion tree and it still takes like four or five years to get a colony down. So uh, I'm not sure if that's slower, but it feels slower to me. Also, the Rontor and the Euthonians have agreed a migration treaty. You're both xenophobes! How can you possibly want that? Ah, and very, very cool indeed. Yeah, the medical workers have made their first appearance over on Cornwall, which is now officially being acknowledged as an agri-world. The game has acknowledged I've actually built a bunch of farms on it. So, these medical workers, they are taking two consumer goods, so pretty small really, and converting that into, yeah, pop growth speed plus 10% and 10 amenities. This place has got plenty of amenities for the time being. Housing is fine. Happiness is hugely high. Yeah, this place is just a lovely place for you guys to live on. And stability is great too. So resources up 12%. Trade value up 12%. Immigration pool plus 8. So potentially, yeah, immigration is going to be leading to... Uh, what's the immigration effect right now? It's not actually saying, which is odd. Because I would have thought, yeah, that would definitely be having an effect if... Ah... But that's only because, uh, yeah, the immigration pool is 8% here. But I'm guessing this place is immigration pool plus 11. So Osprana is even more desirable. Got it. And here's something new. Yes, indeed. Piracy is slowly becoming a very slight problem here. Which is 8% of our trade is not actually making it to anywhere valuable. Because of tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of piracy on routes. And we can actually figure out exactly where that piracy is. The piracy is in the Varna system, in Lothorios, and in Himpra. Uh, pictured, of course, here as well. So we've got ourselves a tiny, tiny amounts of piracy. Now, I can actually have my fleet deal with that. Because if I just basically set up my main fleet and say, You guys, I need you to do the brand new command. Here we are. Patrol. So I'd like you to patrol between here... And the Euthonian blockade, please. So, the fleet is now on the move. And as it is patrolling through these sectors, that should actually lead to a reduction in piracy. Because I've literally got ships passing through, keeping an eye on the place, keeping it safe. So, yeah, the pirates are actually... They are taking a lot more right now because trade value is greater than piracy suppression. Gotcha. Base protection is 2, root trade value 34. Yeah, okay, I see the problem here. But now I've got my fleet. Yeah, here we go. So my fleet's just passing through, suppressing piracy. So to reduce piracy, have your fleet patrol this system. Smaller ships have higher piracy suppression value. Ah, because they're better at chasing down small pirate ships. Okay, so if I simply have my fleet pass backwards and forwards along this route between the Euthonian blockade and Ospra that should suppress the piracy. In fact, as there's a tiny amount of piracy over here in Cornwall as well, I'll actually have, yeah, the fleet do this patrol. Just around here, there's a bunch of value in this part of the world. So this would be a good place for the patrol to occur. Ooh, I think we found ourselves another monstrosity in space. So... Over here, close by to, yeah, the Ganvius, in this space they seem to be not interested in expanding into. Yeah, in uh, Tower Gower, we've actually got ourselves uh, 
a stellar devourer that's knocked this whole area into a bit of an ice age. So uh, we probably want to like get out of here actually. Never mind. That is, what's that? The third science vessel that's exploded as a result of running into a bloody leviathan. I'm amazed people are still even applying for this job. Now, speaking of that area of space, there's an unidentified empire here and ooh, a very pretty tri-star system thing there. Right, by any chance of you guys, uh, I'm guessing that's who you guys have run into. All right, any chance you're willing to, uh, yeah, maybe sell us some information on comms here? In fact, they'll do a comms for comms trade because I've got some extra comms up north they're not familiar with. Right, confirm that. And I'm guessing that's going to tell us who this is right here. No, actually. They're in comms with the Polismus Dynastic Union down over here. So these are pacifist authoritarian things. Not quite sure what you are, but we wish to be friends, whatever it is you are. You weird ocean-based seaweed things. I suppose. Yeah, they're definitely plants. They've got plantoids back there. Right, they're seaweed. They're literally seaweed. They're ocean plants. Got it. And also some dwarves, including, ooh, materialism, egalitarianism, executive committee, lovely, erudite explorers. All right, these guys I think we can get on with. So where exactly are, are they? So there's the seaweed. Where are the dwarves that were just mentioned to us? Oh, they're just up here, are they? Okay, then. Okay, we've got a bit of a problem here, which is as we are continuing to expand, uh, the energy situation is uh, getting worse. Stations, star bases, uh, buildings, districts, all of it requires additional energy to keep functioning. And sure, we've got a good amount of trade going on, but not enough. I think I know what this means, however. It's time for some... Uh, economic twists here. Right now our trade policy favours consumer benefits. It's time to go over to wealth creation. That will sort out that problem immediately, but I'm very worried about what that's going to mean for consumer goods, so that should update next month. We'll probably go into a negative on consumer goods, but we've got a stockpile of like 5,000 coffee machines, toasters, aircon units, We've got plenty of time to sort that problem out. I'd rather have the energy situation. Oh yeah, look at that. Now the energy situation is hugely under control. And we've got enough of a stockpile of consumer goods will be fine for the time being. Ah, and the Ganvius block is officially up for a non-aggression pact. Which I'm totally up for too. Because, speaking of, yeah, unnecessary expenditure. This station right here... I'd say can just be broken down. Just downgrade that immediately. There's no need to pay for the maintenance of, of a Starvum. All right. We can just have that be a perfectly normal station. No need for us to harden that border. If they break the non-aggression pact, we will re-harden it. And this is what I wanted. The Rontus. We've now got full visibility of their capital because my listening outpost on the Rontus blockade is done. Meaning we can now see what their primary fleet looks like and... Uh, Looks pretty feeble to me, to be honest. 13 Corvettes versus my 20. Alright, back over to, uh, yeah, the actual homeworld here. Rontus Prime, what are you guys doing right now? Population of 43, huge pile of civilian industries, energy grid. So technicians plus 15% and one additional job, very useful. I don't think we've actually got that research yet. So when it does show up, we'll definitely be wanting one of those over on Prosperity, of course, together with three alloy foundries, uh, hollow theater research labs, uh, planter administration, uh, bit of a focus on mining. Yeah, nothing too surprising here. Ah, wait a minute. An unidentified empire no one seems to be in communication with. Why do I get the feeling that that might, just might, be one of the three Marauder Empires? Yeah, that strikes me as eminently possible. Right, I'm going to deploy a science vessel to here, just to go and just quickly spy on that area. Just to see what's going on. How's the Void Spawn doing, by the way? Just bumbling around? Yep, just bumbling around. Right, we've got ourselves plenty of energy, and we've got ourselves plenty of alloys. It's time to build up the fleet. We need to bring that thing down. And that will be an excellent exercise in building up the navy regardless. 
There we go. New fleet creator, because the existing fleet is already at its current fleet cap of 20 out of 20. So a new fleet is now being created, and that's going to have immediately nine corvettes in it. We've spent a huge amount of money on all of that business. Marvellous. And, hello. Equality and justice for all denizens of the... Ah, is this the egalitarian faction? These guys are not so happy with us. They want a fair society, they want us to ban... No, sorry, I can't actually ban forced resettlement. It's kind of important to me. Sorry about that. Luckily, not very many people are part of this actual faction right now, so shouldn't be a big deal. Aha! And Osprania has hit 45 people. A new slot has become available. Now, there is definitely a temptation to go for some... What is it? Civilian industries. Two more artisan jobs. Uh, yeah, mass producing some consumer goods because uh, that is starting to go down and that is most certainly a problem. However, we also have a very, very, very big amount of minerals coming into the empire once again. Being able to convert some of those into alloys uh, to assist with building the fleets would not be the worst thing in the world. And the alternative would be research labs. Speeding up research. A technological advantage would be welcome. Very welcome, in fact. Yeah, go on. I can't resist that. I know that's going to cause even higher deficits in terms of consumer goods, but I think we need to give ourselves an advantage. Most of the empires I've seen around me only have one research lab. If we can go up to two, that'll speed things up a bit. Especially as, uh, right now, the actual research cost... Yeah, technology cost is up 9% already. We need a new set of research labs to offset that. Like, pretty darn soon. Oh, bloody hell. This bit of space north of the Zikmox is just a nightmare. So, uh, there's even more here. Over in Blorg's Bane, which is a black hole, there's 4,000 strength in some form of... Yeah, weird thing. Okay, stay away from them. Stay away from them. All right, just work around them. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right, I'm guessing there's someone else around here as well, which has stopped these guys from actually expanding south. Or possibly, of course, the new admin systems mean people aren't blobbing as much as they used to. So just because land is available doesn't mean people are rushing towards it because otherwise it will, yeah, just cause more and more problems for the admin cap, which I'm probably ignoring more than I should, to be honest. You see, this here, this is why I don't want to go banning forced resettlement. It's useful. Over here on Cornwall, we've got ourselves... That's the Farine Combine. Oh, those are the tasty elves up there. They've become more materialist. Fine, they might want to be more friendly in that case. Yeah, we've got... Uh, yeah, plenty of spare housing. 13 people to 15 jobs over in Cornwall. Meanwhile, over on Asprania, I've got myself three people just sitting around unemployed. So, congratulations, you guys are getting yourselves resettled to where there's actually, you know, work. So not only are more people now doing jobs, that's also led to a new slot opening up here in Cornwall. Spot on. Where actually, this works just flipping perfectly because we should probably get a new civilian industries down. Because this is a lovely, happy civilian industry sort of a planet. And we've got enough amenities for the time being. Consumer goods, that's the problem. Yeah, get more civilian industries down right there. And probably follow that up with... Do we really need more food? No, food's under control for the time being. Food is very much under control. Maybe get another city down over in Asprani just to create an extra clerk job just for safety. And to make sure, yeah, we've got plenty of housing ready for the future. Clerk jobs are just very, very useful for me. How are we doing in terms of the robots, by the way? We've got, ooh, double robots. Ooh, that one's cool. You built that one in jet black. Nice. Also, we've got new aliens. Uh, uh, what aliens precisely? Bad aliens or good aliens? Ooh, just normal aliens. Normal aliens, just like me. Possibly mollusks, I think. Okay, that's over... That's over here. Fine, that'll probably be whoever these guys are in that case. Uh, you guys, can we just get on that, please? I'd like to know who those guys are. Oh, never mind. I think they've actually decided to communicate with us first. So these are the Quiramulan. Oh, I like you guys. Your name is fun to say. The Quiramulan. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy saying that. I want to be friends with you. So, bunch of influence from that. You are... Okay. You've got tentacles on your face, which is never a good sign. Those guys just don't seem to get on with birds, to be honest. So this is... 
Harmonious Collective, Pacifist, Authoritarian, Spiritualist. Not exactly a great starting point there. We wish to be friends, please. And how do you feel about me? Not great. They don't hate me. They don't love me either. Fine. Uh, what do we know about you guys? You got yourselves a commercial pact with... Oh, the mega church next door. That's probably concerning. Oh, yeah, you love the mega church next door. Okay, so uh, you're probably being... Oh, yeah, because you're spiritualist. Right, so you're just basically being slowly converted to their religion. Gotcha. And is that by any chance? That's the destroyers. The destroyers are ready to go. Nice. And civilian fabricators, that'll be presumably either an upgrade or an alternative to just civilian industries. The problem is that requires, uh, what is that, the, yeah, rare crystals to operate. I do not have rare crystals, no ability to harvest them, but I believe I do actually have some, yeah, I need rare crystal mining in order to actually get those, but I do have some right there. Right, in that case, focus on armor. We are getting ourselves ready for war here. Trying to take out a bloody void spawn will be an excellent little test for our fledgling navy. Here we go, our destroyers are ready to go. Some point defense on the front, some basic coil guns, uh, together with, yeah, the blue lasers on the medium slot just for a bit of extra firepower. Plenty of spare power for loads of shielding, and we are birds, so our ships are beautiful and sleek and sexy and gorgeous. That is spot on. Oh, and I think prosperity is down. Please do not immediately bombard it. All right, it would be lovely if it's prosperity technically in its own actual... Wait, hang on, how does that even work? Oh, prosperity is in the world's tiniest sector, because sectors only decide to take things that are within two. So prosperity is just basically trapped in the world's crappiest sector. I'm not even going to think of that as a sector. Right, as far as I'm concerned, that's a quarantine. Right flipping there, and oh bloody hell. Yes, you can have a thousand energy. We don't have much in the way of energy right now, but you can. Right, prosperity, I'm just going to refer to that as the prosperity quarantine zone. Right now, because technically it falls just outside the Osprania core district. We can't even afford right now to even slap a leader on this thing, but prosperity will be a wonderful place to live. Alright? It will be. We just need to start slapping down, yeah, those generator districts. Get two of them down, if flipping immediately. Population is, yeah, it's just these two colonists right now. Two tiles, absolutely beautiful. Birds all together, colonizing these inhospitable worlds. Spot on. Those guys are extremely flipping happy for the time being. We've got ourselves some generator districts coming on. Ooh. Hang on. Are robots allowed to do generators? Or are robots only allowed to do mines and agriculture? I genuinely don't know, so we're going to have to figure that out together. Still, at the bare minimum, hang on, let's just have an update on the old trade situation right now. Yeah, 99% of trade is now getting through. The new patrol route is working very nicely. Alright, it looks like the artisan jobs are done over on Cornwall, which should sort out the... There we go. We've stabilised. We've stabilised on consumer goods. It's still going down, but only the tiniest amount right now. Beautiful. And the FTL inhibitors are ready to go. And there's the energy grid. Spot flipping on exactly the time we needed it. We don't need cold fusion reactors just yet. The level 2 reactor is doing the job. Get energy grid sorted out. That's only going to take like two years. And uh, that is most definitely something we'll be wanting on prosperity. Still, the energy is going up very, very fast indeed. We can actually have ourselves a governor for the tiny prosperity quarantine zone. <laughs> go on then. Have fun. I'm not sure how we get you there. We presume you just recruited you locally because I'm not convinced that anyone is going to manage to successfully get to quarantine right now. <laughs> not convinced that's happening. No, 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 no. Ah, but I assume that extremely tough anomaly over on, yeah, Derez has actually yielded a league prison complex. Okay, so this is related to the First League. These guys were guilty of piracy, terrorism, and other crimes of an extraordinary nature. Fossilized remains from some prisoners can still be found where the cells used to be. Interesting. Okay. Would you like to actually get on with that immediately if you're not already doing that? Oh, someone else is in touch, and bloody hell, is it another Megacorp? No, these are actually formerly traders, not a Megacorp. Fine, I'm guessing you guys are up north. 
somewhere. Fine, business conglomerate operating out of the Minox system, specializing in trade. Alright, where are you guys exactly? I'm not quite sure where you guys are. Ah, and that's what these guys are doing. They're willing to actually trade exotic gases for... Ooh, an awful lot of energy. Got it, except why am I not allowed to actually take that? Ah, because you need to pay the first 500 energy up front. Ouch. Okay. So I pay you 500 energy, and as a result of that going forward, for the next 10 years, I get one exotic gas in return for 10 energy. So they want a big chunk up front, and then after that, it's much more reasonable. So... Might be something worth thinking about there. What else are you guys actually offering? And we seek your expertise, but yeah, until they actually like us, they're not into that. Gotcha. Aha! And in what I consider to be an absolute bargain, the tile are willing to actually give me, yeah, active sensor link for active sensor link in return for 28 minerals for the next 30 years. Now that, that very much works for me. And the Zikmoks down south are happy to do the same for free. I mean, I can actually see what's going on on their planets nice and easily. Including, okay, bloody hell, guys, I think you've got enough police, all right? The crime is, yeah, 49 up from Pops, minus 225. <laughs> they must just be flipping terrified of invasion, but yeah, I feel like uh, possibly the AI needs a bit of work in how it calculates what it is or isn't going to build. Have you guys done exactly the same thing, by the way? Have you guys just decided, screw it, we're going to... Oh, hang on, they haven't actually accepted yet. Wait for them to accept, because they totally flipping well. Well, one, apparently there was an escape attempt from the First League prison complex, which is absolutely flipping marvellous. That gets us a First League artifact and some physics research. And the tile have indeed decided to swap information with me, including... Uh, oh, very nice. Very nice here. Silver and orange, good combination. 2,000 fleet power with you guys, and... Okay, possibly there might be a bit of overbuilding in terms of precedence. Yeah, this this could possibly do with a bit of patching paradox. I don't understand quite why. Yeah, they are just basically building four precinct houses when crime is effectively non-existent. But most importantly of all, we've managed to actually find a way through this bloody bit of space by the Zikmoks without actually being destroyed. So I've got a science vessel heading out into, yes, the wild black yonder over in this direction. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on over there. And the fleet is starting to shape up. Alright, we have got our first destroyers coming in. We've actually got a decent volume of ships here. These guys are, their fleet power is still equivalent for the time being. But I think the Rontor are, they are inferior to us right now. Which is marvellous. Which means, uh, if I wanted to, I could basically try and force this mega corporation to become my subsidiary. Oh, that might be fun. That might be fun. The moment someone's officially inferior to you, you can start being a dick to them and try and start subjugating them. How about you? You're inferior to me as well. Well, that's very, very interesting. I'd need to break the non-aggression pact with you, but we are in a position where we could potentially go and deal with these guys, just basically make them work for me. Do you have any form of... No. You have got no form of defensive pact whatsoever. So, that is, that is interesting. Alright, we may not be doing a great job of getting branch officers down all across everyone else's empire, but we're starting to build up the fleet. And as the fleet becomes more powerful, and as the new research labs that I've actually started building on my capital kick into life, technologically and fleet-wise, we are going to move ahead of our competitors. And once we are officially superior to them, we can start building up our empire in the way that megacorps pretty much have to. They cannot afford to play wide. They have got to play a game of vassals. So we need to start getting some of these guys officially into our empire. I'd say, yeah... In a few years' time, once the actual non-aggression pact has worn off, we managed to cancel that pretty much immediately. Yeah, that could be an excellent little first subsidiary for me. A very small neighbour to pick off. And the Zitmox, they could be next too. There's two people down here. That, as far as I can see, I don't think these guys have really got much in the way of uh, friends. These guys are technically equivalent to me for now. But once I've actually eaten the Ganvius, 
they wouldn't be. Meanwhile, with a ton of defensive pact, the Rontor and the Euthonians can't do anything to me, giving me pretty much free reign to pick off some of my southern neighbours, which will be very, very useful indeed because, uh, yeah, that might open up some opportunities to expand uh, this part of the world, this part of the world. Right, I think we've got a plan. <laughs> And once we've done all of that, who knows, maybe we'll even have enough firepower to actually reclaim our planet out of the prosperity quarantine zone. <laughs> because that bloody void spawn is just right there right now. So, we will see. We will see how we deal with all of that next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Stellaris Megacorp. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Oh no! Oh dear! America's decided they do not like us! Just want to finish off China, I can die happily. Well, not happily because there's nuclear fire involved, but moderately happily. There we go. I've just started. Oh, God. The Earth was fun, wasn't it? We can all agree the Earth was great.